and welcome to the first episode of Oysters and Anarchism. I'm Katrina Hafner, and this is my guest, Nathan Goodman. So, how do you feel towards oysters? I think oysters are pretty tasty, have a lot of culinary uses, particularly oyster sauce, which I found quite applicable in one of my favorite forms of cuisine, Thai food. Can you tell us a little bit how you feel towards anarchism? I think anarchism is perhaps the best available political philosophy for achieving a form of social organization compatible with human flourishing. I advocate anarchism in my writing at the Center for a Stateless Society, a left-wing market anarchist think tank and media center. I think that anarchism, that is the abolition of the state and the search for organizational forms and forms of interpersonal relationships built around voluntary cooperation, self-governance, and non-hierarchical organization can provide us with a means of building a society that is much more compatible with human flourishing. The state acts as a predatory institution that engages in routine acts of aggression, from caging individuals for victimless crimes to allowing its police forces to brutalize, beat, and murder innocent people to engaging in a litany of onerous regulations that impede voluntary mutually beneficial exchange and commerce. As such, I seek to both study the possibilities beyond the state and to advocate for a world where we can fully realize these and live without domination, statism, and oppression. Okay, very good. So he was telling me earlier that he's found a tie between oysters and anarchism. Can you tell us about that? Well, yes. I mean, when you mentioned that I would be a guest on Oysters and Anarchism, I thought, well, what do those have to do with each other? And I realized quite a lot. As I mentioned, I find oysters to be quite tasty, particularly in oyster sauce, in Thai food and Thai cuisine. And I realized that cuisine is an example of the decentralized voluntary cooperation that human beings engage in without need for compulsion or oppression. It simply has acting in our interests both our creative interests to produce things that are tastier and better, possibly more aesthetically pleasing visually even, and acting in the interest of profit. As Adam Smith said, it is not from benevolence that, of the butcher or baker that we expect our dinner, but from the regard for their own self-interest. Likewise, it's sometimes not produced in the commercial sphere, but in homes for gatherings of friends. But in any case, food production is something that while it is currently impacted by the state through things like agricultural subsidies, is fundamentally something we would do quite easily without the state, and everyone sees how we could do it without the state. I generally think that we should apply the same principles to things that most people think could only be done by the state, such as provision of security, defense, rights protection, um, that those should be provided by the same flourishing spheres of voluntary interaction that currently provide food. The other connection between oysters and anarchism is that I've seen some people who would otherwise consider themselves vegans or vegetarians argue that oysters are acceptable for vegans and vegetarians to eat because oysters, to our knowledge, do not have the types of nervous systems that make them capable of suffering. Now, generally when I think of a consequentialist system of ethics that's built around the idea that we should reduce suffering and increase pleasure and flourishing and well-being, I think that that tends to lead me towards a set of anarchist conclusions. That anarchist conclusions follow from a serious commitment to consequentialism. This is mostly because of the costs of state action through its wars, its violence, its aggression and predation upon individuals, as well as through the various routes not taken the opportunity cost of state action suppressing voluntary cooperation. So I think both the ethical considerations that people have made with regards to oysters and the various pleasures that people derive from oysters tell us a little bit about the case for anarchy and self-governance. Very interesting. So are you a vegan or not? I'm not. I'm simply sympathetic to some of the relevant arguments, and so I've read some articles by vegans or by those who aren't quite vegans because they eat oysters. Okay, great. So if any of the viewers want to um, follow Nathan's work, where can they find you at? Well, I write a lot at the Center for a Stateless Society. That's c4ss.org. 
and there you can find op-eds, blog posts, feature articles that I've written, including uh, many articles on the prison system and why I favor abolishing it. You can also find some of my writing at the website of Students for Liberty, where I am on the blog team and write several posts a month. Well, thank you, Nathan, for being our first guest ever, or my first guest ever. And thank you for watching, and be sure to tune in for the next episode. Thanks for having me.